what's going on. I don't see your other device back yet. Okay, it's it's coming up. Oh, oh great. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so no, okay. can you make me a co-host on the other device, please? I am doing that. Um, yes, your co-host now. Okay. Uh, Fantastic. If there's another device, I don't see it. No, I'm I'm not a co-host where I need to be. Um, I just joined. Uh, and, I, and I don't think I can do it anymore. Um, oh. <laughs> Ron, Ron if, you if you search for Nikita in the participant list. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. OK, thank you. OK, I think it's done. Uh, yes, OK. Yes, oh. good. OK, so I'm starting my broadcast. All right. Okay. Tudor, are you the host? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to do it tonight. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself. Um, so, uh, also before we start, so Nikita, uh, if uh, if questions come up, um, they will be written in the chat, um, and but you don't have to look at it if you don't don't want to. Um, I'll, if it's okay, I'll interrupt you from time to time. Okay. Sure. Um, okay. um, so welcome everyone to this week's um, Western Hemisphere Colloquium on Geometry and Physics. Um, we're extremely happy to have Nikita Nekrasov with us and, and thank you um, again Nikita for, for stepping in last minute. Um, and Nikita is going to uh, talk about beauty and the defects. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give a sort of a review now that this is actually a colloquium uh, of the recent works I've been doing with uh, with my students uh, and my former postdoc, not my former postdoc, but our former postdoc. So my student, uh, my current student, Norton Lee, who is graduating, my former student, Sam Byung Jong, who is in Rutgers now, and uh, our former math postdoc, uh, Sasha Tsimbaluk, who is now uh, at uh, Purdue. And these are all works which are related to uh, the study of uh, defects um, in supersymmetric uh, gauge theories in uh, four dimensions and the applications uh, of what we learned, what we've learned to do in, in four dimensional gauge theory uh, to things like two-dimensional CFT or uh, uh, even classical uh, classical mechanics. Uh, so it turns out that many interesting things come out of the of the uh, duality between the uh, four-dimensional supersymmetric theories and uh, two-dimensional uh, conformal field theories or theories with extended chiral algebras and. Uh, these dualities, uh, most of them are still conjectures. They are motivated by, by string theory constructions and M theory constructions. But the consequences of these dualities, the, the conjectures which follow can often be actually proven uh, rigorously. And even though the conjectures themselves are pretty, pretty old, uh, the proofs uh, took some time to, to come about. Now we, the, we we have them, and and therefore, indirectly, we're actually giving a support to to string dualities uh, by by making certain that the mathematical consequences are true. So that by by physical standards, that means that the original con conjectures were true. Uh, of course, this is only half a joke. Okay, so uh, so actually, I will have two main uh, main uh, main topics. Uh, 
and and one uh, let me write them roughly so one one class of problems would be the, related to the uh, Knižnik the Malochik of equation uh, in four dimensional gauge theory. And the second class, and which second class of problems, which which actually is related to the first one, is the uh, study of Penleve six uh, tau function and its uh, generalizations. So actually, let me start with the second uh, line, and then we'll come back to the first one. So this uh, story started for me in uh, in 2012, where uh, three uh, extremely young and bright uh, mathematical physicists. Uh, at that time, they were I think all of them were in Kiev in Ukraine. Uh, came up with a formula which is now known in, in mathematical physics circles as Kiev formula, uh, but I will name them they call it GIL formula after the, the orders. And so the formula which this gentleman wrote uh, at the time, it was a conjecture. That was the formula for the for certain object, which is associated to a, a century old mathematical topic. And that is the uh, Penleve six or P six for short equation. So the equation, it's look, looks pretty simple. Maybe it's not the first equation you would write, but uh, that's the equation which uh, Monsieur Penleve uh, wrote uh, as an answer to a certain classification problem in the study of uh, ordinary differential equations. And so the equation depends on four complex parameters, which I will call theta zero, theta t, theta one, and theta infinity. So the, these are the parameters which are fixed for the, uh, for the duration of the time evolution. So t is the time for this problem. And it's the equation for the, uh, for, for the, which describes the dynamics of a single particle. Uh, well, it's actually a complexified particle. So it's, the, it's a complex valued function of a complex variable t. And the equation is, is the OD. So it looks a bit uh, strange, uh, but uh, that's the answer to a certain classification problem. Uh, so, Even though the equation looks scary, it actually it's it's actually a Hamiltonian equation. It's a Hamiltonian equation. So there is a two-dimensional phase space. Well, it's a complex phase space. I will, it's actually more complicated than C two, but locally it's a, it's just a complex plane. Uh, and the Hamiltonian depends on uh, so so depends on the coordinate w on the on the conjugate momentum p and it depends on time so it's a time dependent Hamiltonian it's not uh, the first thing you learn in in uh, classical dynamics but that's probably the second thing you learn uh, and it turns out that uh, and that's probably not what Penleve himself uh, wrote, but uh, for the problem that he was classifying and the problem he was interested in, in the singularities of the solutions of, the, of this equation. And so it turns out that to study the singularities where, where the solution blows up, uh, it is very useful to have an object whose time derivative gives you the Hamiltonian or properly normalized Hamiltonian. And that object is the tau function So, uh, of course, for the problem at hand, when you have only one Hamiltonian, uh, you can always write it as a derivative of some function, call it the Hamilton Jacobi potential. Uh, so this is not uh, not very uh, very useful uh, quantity. It it might it might appear, uh, but. Uh, 
the devil in the definition lies in what in what are the independent variables what are the what what is this, what is this s object is a function of and we'll we'll come to that later uh, so s uh, should be properly expressed through initial conditions or should be expressed through proper 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 functions of initial conditions and uh, so one not obvious thing is that this quantity first of all s knows about the uh, the locations location of singularities In fact, it's, it's not S, it's as exponential, so which, which is the tau, which is the tau function. And second, secondly, uh, this definition ad admits the uh, generalization to many, uh, to several degrees of freedom. where uh, let's say you have uh, a more general situation when you have a phase space, uh, which is again, a complex symplectic manifold. And you have uh, commuting Hamiltonian flows. You have a collection of functions The maximal collection of functions. So for the phase space of dimension 2R, you have R functions, which depend uh, on some auxiliary parameters on times. So they depend on the, let's say some Darboux coordinates, P, Q, and on times. So they, de they de determine, define the, uh, in the usual way, the, uh, the time evolution. I'm tired of keeping track of the colors. So in addition to, to this, so, so in principle, the condition that this, this flows uh, commute is some differential condition on the Hamiltonians. But if you're lucky, these Hamiltonians obey two conditions instead of one, namely, uh, so special situation and this special situation is actually it's a hint that there is a hyper geometry hiding in the somewhere in the around the corner and so this is the situation where not only the hamiltonians poisson commute So this is the Poisson bracket defined using the symplectic form, but also the time derivatives also commute. So this is stronger, stronger than than the uh, necessary condition for the uh, for, for these flows to commute. The necessary condition would be that the the sum of these two. Uh, equations is equal to zero, not 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 that individually they they, uh, they vanish, and so in this case you can define uh, uh, the 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 potential which generates all these Hamiltonians out of a single function. Now, what is this function of? In addition to the function of times, that's a tricky point which I will. Uh, not not specify at the moment. Um, but it's a function on roughly this this roughly the phase space. So it's so it, it, it's a function of uh, on on the phase space 
times the space of uh, time parameters. So let me call it tau. So the, these are coordinates on some on the time manifold. So in the example, in the in the original example, so for Panleve six, actually this time manifold, this one-dimensional time manifold, is actually CP one, which is actually the modular space of. Uh, four punctured uh, spheres and the, the phase space after some considerations, one, one arrives at the conclusion that this, this equation would look less uh, strange if you interpret it properly. And what, what, what's the interpretation? It's a space of, Of collection of so it's a space of meromorphic meromorphic connections on the sphere with with four punctures with fixed residue uh, fixed conjugate classes of the residues. So uh, let me describe it in two ways as a symplectic quotient. And then what what is it what is this actually parameterizing? So this it parameterizes the objects of the form. Where so a i i equals zero t one and infinity are uh, two by two traceless matrices, and we uh, fix the eigenvalues. So trace of each trace of a square of each of residues is equal to twice theta i squared. So theta and minus theta are eigenvalues of the respective residues. And uh, the flow, the Pendleby flow, what it does, it actually describes, it's the isomonodromy deformation of nabla, of this connection nabla. So as you change the, uh, the positions of the poles and up to the uh, fractional linear transformation for four punctures, you have only one parameter uh, at your disposal, the cross ratio of these positions of the poles, you then ad you adjust the residues in such a way that the, the resulting connection is gauge equivalent to the, to the original one. In other words, as you take the time derivative of nabla, this is equal to the, uh, this is equivalent to some gauge transformation of nabla. And so when you express this evolution in terms of some gauge invariant coordinates on, uh, on the space of uh, residues Modular overall conjugation. So th that 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 gives you the Penderev equation. So Penderev equation is just this geometric, geometrically defined evolution expressed in in certain coordinates. Uh, and then the tau function is actually uh, so it's so the tau function is the integral. Of the Hamiltonian generating this evolution. So that Hamiltonian is simply a certain combination of quadratic Casimirs. Um, again, the, 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 the tricky part of this definition is what, 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 is, uh, what, the, what are the independent quantities? So, uh, so this is the very, very old subject. And uh, from this definition, it's clear how to generalize to, uh, okay, so Greg is asking precisely what are the coordinates. 
Okay, uh, the, an the answer is that uh, these are the so-called, uh, so the coordinate W is the so-called uh, separated variable coordinate. Again, for the si system with the one very degree of freedom, call it separated variable is not very uh, polite, but uh, it becomes really valuable when you consider the case of many uh, of, of more than four punctures. Uh, so if in the gauge, where A infinity is diagonal, The, uh, the the connection one form well it has this uh, it has two by two structure and then so one of these blocks it has the form uh, some coefficient which is irrelevant then it has the first order poles at uh, zero t and, and one and it has the uh, zero at infinity and uh, it has additional zero sorry not w i'm sorry uh, so this is one form of the z variable so it has poles in the z variables and then has a zero so this w is the location of the zero of the um, one, two matrix element. So this is the point where the uh, uh, SL2 connection um, becomes lower triangular. Okay, there was another question, I guess. Uh, okay. Of course, uh, there is a more, uh, well, not modern, but there is an alternative definition which happens to be, uh, happens to coincide with that, which I, I mean, I, I can say it in words, but uh, I cannot explain it yet because I didn't introduce the relevant uh, notions. This is also a position of a screening operator in, in the free field representation. Um, so this is, um, so this coordinate is, is important in the BPZ KZ correspondence. But the, the uh, it's, it's, it's not gonna be important for what I'm, I'm going to talk about. There are actually many coordinate systems and uh, they are, it's, it's a long story which uh, I and uh, Sam Bjorn and, and I worked out. Uh, so there are different, different coordinate systems and you have to be careful which one you use in, 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 in discussing things uh, in particular, because this, for example, this variable W depends on time T. So if you change the, uh, I call it a background dependent variable. It's uh, uh, even though if I describe my phase space in terms of the residues of the connections, uh, the residues themselves seem to be background independent. They 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 kind of defined arbit, arbit, uh, without reference to the actual positions of the of the poles. The, uh, the, the position of the zero of this specific uh, matrix element depends on the on on the uh, on the time variable, and so you may choose other variables which would be independent of time, and and and. Uh, and when you make changes of coordinates, the definition of the tau function will change. So this is defined in a specific coordinate system. And uh, the remarkable thing is that, so GIL found the formula for, for tau, which is, mind you, it's the literally the exponential of this potential S. So this is, and so if you think of S as of some kind of hamilton jacobi potential, this is a, this is a highly surprising object because normally the natural formula to write uh, 
using the hamilton uh, jacobi potential in terms of if you want to raise it to some exponential you would divide by a Planck constant but there is no Planck constant here uh, yet yet uh, Uh, Gamayun, Yorgov, and Lisovi wrote the formula which expresses this exponential. And their formula uh, looks as follows. So it's a sum over the, over the integers. And then uh, there is some strange... Um, non-integer power of t. Then there are some prefactors which uh, depend on um, on the monodromy data and uh, so on on this uh, on the, on the residues and on this additional parameter alpha which I will now introduce and uh, there's another parameter beta so 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 these guys tau depends on alpha, beta, and the vector of thetas, times um, something which at the time they wrote uh, looked uh, just like some sum over, over pairs of Young diagrams, but immediately when they wrote the formula, I mean, I wrote to them and they, somebody else told them that this is actually the instant on partition function of the, uh, So this is the instant on partition function of omega deformed n equals two SU two theory in four dimensions with four fundamental hypermultiplets where T is usually called Q. It's a, it's it's a comp exponentiated complexified uh, gauge coupling. Uh, the four thetas are related to the four masses. So these are the masses uh, of quarks. The thetas are dimensionless parameters because they're the eigenvalues of some matrices. So they made dimensionless by dividing by the, the parameter of omega deformation. And this parameter is H bar. And it's, this is called a S, this is a so-called SU2 case of the omega deformation. It's the omega deformation with respect to the symmetry of R4, which preserves the hyperkeller uh, structure. And um, so this deformation, uh, th this omega deformation is usually compared to, uh, related to the topological string and H bar is, is identified with, um, with the topological string uh, coupling constant, the topological string being uh, the A model on, on certain local Calabi-Yau, uh, which I will not use here. Uh, so what is what is surprise what is the surprise here? The surprise here is that this is uh, this instanton partition function is not uh, is not a classical object. So it's uh, uh, in my old work with Okunkov, this this object was expressed through the the uh, correlation functions of of free fermions uh, some somehow somewhat general. Well, using some unusual vertex operators in the theory of free fermions. And later uh, in the work of uh, Aldai, Gayota, and Tachikawa, so this, is, this was related to the uh, conformal blocks of Liouville theory with central charge equals to one. So this is C equals one where I saw a conformal uh, block, where alpha, so this is the conformal block for, for, the, uh, for the four point uh, correlation function, 
with four vertex operators inserted at zero, t, one, and infinity, with thetas determining the uh, conformal dimensions of primary fields. So there's a conformal dimensions of Liouville primaries and alpha determining the uh, conformal dimension of the intermediate uh, in the intermediate channel. And then, yes. Yeah. Sorry, uh, yes. From, from Ami Hanani, um, why is there no H bar in the original? Yeah. Yes, uh, okay, so, uh, well, the original object depends on alpha, beta, and four thetas, and they are uh, uh, dimensionless quantities, which are expressed through dimension full quantities of, of gauge theory uh, divided by H bar. So alpha is uh, the Coulomb modulus of, of the four-dimensional gauge theory. And the reason why you can, you can actually scale away one mass parameter, express everything in terms of the dimension less parameters is because of the fact that this theory is asymptotically conformal. So the beta function is equal to zero. Therefore, uh, uh, this instant on partition function is actually dimensionless. And so uh, you have uh, out of four masses, the Coulomb, uh, the Coulomb parameter and the omega deformation parameter, which are all which all have dimension of mass in physical units, you uh, end up with uh, um, with five dimensionless parameters. There is one more parameter which I will call which I call beta, which is uh, expressed, and this is not uh, uh, well. It's also in in the Gamayun uh, Yorga Fusovi formula, but uh, it's actually slightly uh, more involved. So beta is actually derivative with respect to alpha of, uh, of an object which, uh, which also has the gauge, gauge theoretic interpretation. Uh, just a second. Well, let me just leave it like that. So this is some uh, this is the effective uh, twisted superpotential uh, of 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 an effective two-dimensional theory, which I will will, will, will introduce later. In in the work of uh, in 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 the uh, GIL formula. This parameter is just some parameter which uh, you need to, which you have from the, um, on, on the Penleve side. So, so it's, it's, it's a parameter which defines the monodromy data. And so what is, what is this monodromy data? Well, uh, there are two ways of looking at this phase space. So one is the, the, what I just described is in terms of the, uh, the residues of the metamorphic connection. And another way, and that's the content of the so-called Riemann-Hilbert correspondence. Uh, so this, this is the, so this is the, describing the, uh, the monodromy of this uh, neuromorphic connection. by taking the solutions, the, taking the horizontal sections and analytically continuing them around the, the, uh, the singularities. So you have four monodromy matrices whose product is equal to one because we are in the form function sphere. And so you, you have a map from this phase space across the, the parameter T to the space of matrices obeying this condition up to the overall conjugation by the group, uh, by the uh, SO2 group. And so this is the uh, space of flat 
SL2 connections. And that space has its own symplectic form and it has its own Darbu coordinates. And so it turns out that alpha and beta are Darbu coordinates for the uh, ITA bot symplectic form on that space. So, uh, so in order to, so, so, so the monogamy data by definition, the, the monogamy parameters of the meromorphic connection are preserved by the time evolution because that's as a monogamic evolution. And so the initial conditions uh, map to certain values of alpha and beta. And in terms of those alpha and beta, you compute the tau function by, by this formula. And then you can ask whether it has a pole or, or it's, a, so it's a singular or non-singular at some value of t, and that's, that's a way to detect, it, detect the emergence of singularities of your solution. Uh, so uh, I will go into the, to this analysis. It's, it's, a, it's actually, it's an industry. People, people study these tau functions. So, uh, six equation is uh, it's one of the you know, very popular equations. It, uh, arises uh, in various questions of mathematical physics uh, in the work of uh, Mako and Wu it, uh, first arose in the 70s in the studies of the correlation functions of the Eisen model. It, uh, you can find it in the study of the quasi-normal modes of the of, uh, you know, black holes. And, and so, so these are important. Uh, so this is an important equation. And in 90s, uh, Dubrovin et al. found it in uh, uh, founded uh, in the study of WGV equations. So Greg's, Greg is asking uh, whether the generation to Penleves uh, with lower number, like three, two, uh, have a gauge theory interpretation or one. Uh, that's a very tough question because uh, these are confluent degenerations which, uh, which look very singular when if you express them in terms of these dimension less quantities. Uh, uh, and um, so, so my short answer is I don't know. I believe that uh, the answer is yes, but most likely it involves the non-Lagrangian theories. Um, okay. So Jan Sobiman is asking, what is the corresponding lo col local Calabiao threefold? I can draw the toric diagram for you, but uh, later on, I don't want to. to Okay, somebody is asking, Yong Chao Lu asks me uh, whether the tau function keeps the same under the change of complex structures of the phase space. Well, uh, the tau function, the way I defined it uh, was, was defined uh, with respect to a specific complex structure. Uh, and the rotation of complex structures will rotate the tau, the theta parameters. So maybe uh, uh, there is a way to make this, this thing covariant under the happy color rotations, but you need to rotate uh, many, many, many uh, things at the same time. All right, I, so what I want to focus on, uh, and my time is running, running short, so I, I have to speed up, is uh, first of all, I want to point out that there is a mystery. So on the left-hand side, you have some classical object, and on the right-hand side, you have something which is uh, rather quantum. So we, so in Liouville theory, we would consider the limit C goes to infinity to be the classical limit. But uh, C equals to one is kind of a the very very quantum point, even though it is related to, to free fermions, but it's um, it's a non-trivial relation. So what's going on? How do we get the relation between classical and quantum? And what's the origin of this relation? So I'll just uh, make a quick statement because, uh, so the statement is the following that uh, you can explain this relation, you can prove this formula using the representation theory. And uh, that's what uh, mathematicians like uh, Bernstein and, and, and others uh, did. So, uh, but it's, it's, it looks very strange. So you study, you're relating the representation theory of the SL2 uh, Katsmudi algebra at, at various levels to the presentation theory of the Virasora algebra. 
And this is not the sugar water construction. It's not just, it's not the Drinfield Sokolov reduction. It's a, it's a more complicated relation. Um, so, so the direct two-dimensional CFT approach is not very illuminating. It is possible, but it is not very illuminating. So what I claim is more illuminating, and that's what, I mean, I recognized in this formula, or in this JL formula, that the origin of this summation over, over integers and the, the origin of this uh, instanton partition function with the Coulomb parameter shifted by an integer, that's something which, you, which is natural in, in four dimensions. And so the, so the GL formula is actually a blow up formula. So in four dimensions, uh, when you study the, let's say gauge theory on R4 or on any four dimensional manifold, there is a kind of a local observable which you can create by studying the, the, the theory on, their, uh, on the space which is blown up at one point. Namely, you make a local surgery when you remove a point and glue, glue in uh, a two-dimensional sphere with appropriate normal bundle so that, uh, uh, oh yes, Pavlo Gavrilenko is, is confirming that for, for the uh, degenerate pen the, the gauge theories are uh, typically these uh, non-trivial fixed points, which are not, which don't have a Lagrangian description. Uh, so that's the answer to Greg's, Greg's question. Uh, so you glue in small, small two sphere in such a way that there is no boundary. So you can, if you just remove a, a small neighborhood of a point that will create a boundary, which is a three sphere. And then you can contract inside this three sphere, the orbits of Hopf's Hopf, uh, vibration. So that will actually remove, uh, remove the boundary and create a non-contractible two sphere. And then depending on whether you, you insert or uh, you, you can insert some surface observable along this two, uh, two sphere, you will create various uh, local observables. And uh, there is a now, I would say more than 30, well, al almost 30 year old uh, industry in, uh, in, in, uh, in mathematics and also in physics of uh, relating the partition functions of gauge theory on the blown up spaces to the partition function on the theory on the, on the, on the blown down space. So they, these theories are related. Uh, well, when I talk about supersymmetric theory, I mean the theory which, uh, which is made supersymmetric even on the curved, on the curved or partially curved uh, background. So you can think about topological field theory. And so then for in topological field theory, the actual size of this two dimensional sphere should not matter. Uh, you may expect you, you may encounter some kind of wall crossing uh, phenomenon when even though the size doesn't matter as a continuous parameter, the partition function jumps and some special val values of the size. For the theories uh, which I'm now considering, the, the asymptotically conformal theory, it was mathematically proven that, that if you don't insert any observables, if you just modify the geometry, then the partition function of the theory on the blown up space coincides with the partition function of the uh, original space. So this is uh, in the context which I need for, for today's work, uh, the space is actually flat space, but uh, again, we are working equivalently with respect to the rotations. And so this is proved by Nakajima in Yoshioka in uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, unfortunately, the, the formula which you get from, from that relation, and that's already a non-trivial formula, by the way. So that formula uh, tells you that the partition function of, uh, of that theory as a function of Coulomb moduli, the masses the gauge coupling and the equivalent parameters. So this is for general, general omega deformation. Uh, 
can be expressed. So I'm writing this for SU2, but there is a actually more general formula for, for any rank. And, and masses are uh, intact. So geometrically, what, what, what's going on is that, uh, so when you blow up the space, you create, uh, you create a, uh, an exceptional P1 and in gauge theory, in effective, low energy effective abelian gauge theory, uh, this P1 can support non-trivial fluxes. And so these are the uh, integers we're summing over and then uh, equivalently the, the instantons of the microscopic theory and this configurations of the effective abelian theory, they localize on the uh, torus invariant configurations and they, they tend to uh, you know, be concentrated near the fixed points of the torus section on the blown up space and there are two such fixed points. This is, this is the contribution of this fixed point. So this is North Pole, and this is the South Pole of the uh, exceptional uh, two sphere. And what's important is that the local geometry of these points is of course, it's that of the flat space, but the action of the, uh, of the uh, torus of rotations now have different uh, local structure. So if, uh, Z1 and Z2 are coordinates on the uh, on the original space are formed in the complex some complex structure. Uh, then the local coordinates on the blow up are either Z1, sorry, Z1, um, Z2 over Z1, or Z1 over Z2, Z2. So these are local. coordinates near uh, North Pole and near the South Pole. And that, that's, that explains the, the change of the equivariant parameters in this formula. So, uh, so that formula is very nice and uh, Nakajima and Yashoka actually used it to, to prove uh, some of my, my conjectures about the prepotential of the theory, but uh, per se it is not enough to, to prove the JL formula. So the one step which you need is to add uh, another defect to the problem and that's the surface defect. So we are now considering gauge theory on R4 with a defect along R2 where we are allowing the, uh, the uh, the, the dynamical gauge field to have a non-trivial uh, holonomy around a small circle uh, around a fixed uh, two-dimensional plane. So th that, that can be done in a suprasmatic fashion. And in this way, you essentially couple uh, four-dimensional gauge theory coupled to a um, two-dimensional sigma model valued in some vector bundle over the uh, complete flag variety, which in our case is, is just CP1. And so this, uh, so, so since uh, this, the flag variety uh, has, a, has a topology, so the surface defect depends on the, on parameters. So it depends on Kähler moduli of the of the flag variety. And so this way you can define now the partition function of the combined system, the the bulk gauge theory plus the surface defect, and it depends now on the so the Coulomb moduli as before, it depends on the, uh, so this is the uh, K 
complexified Keller modulus of the Siegel model. So it depends on the masses and depends on the on the equivariant parameters. So in order for the surface effect to be consistent with, with, with omega deformation, I'm assuming that uh, my rotations preserve the plane where the surface defect is extended. And so epsilon two rotates uh, is a parameter of rotation in the plane transverse to the surface defect and epsilon one rotates the surface of the surface defect. So that's a partition function which can be uh, can be computed explicitly using localization. And uh, so one beautiful fact about this partition function, and that, which is what we proved with Simbaluk, is that this is equal. This ob equal, this object obeys Knizhnik the logic of equation for SUN gauge theories for uh, so, so it's a, it's an equation which is obeyed by an analytically continued four point conformal block of the SLN current algebra. So now it's the uh, it is actually quite tricky because the representations involved are infinite dimensional representations and uh, there are some there are subtleties in, in taking the tensor product and decomposing them and taking the invariants which are not uh, usually seen in, uh, which are not visible in, in, in the rational conformal field theory. So the, the four representations which correspond to the conformal block are uh, the lowest weight Fermat module, the highest weight Fermat module, and then the so-called heisenberg weil modules, which are, uh, so they are all infinite dimensional. And uh, so let me call it V0, Vt, V1, V infinity. So this function, of the uh, of all the parameters which I which I explained uh, in the gauge theory context is identified with an invariant in the tensor product of four uh, such representations, and so this it's an infinite dimensional space which can be identified with the space of functions. Pro proper functions of uh, um, so these are fugacities for the uh, Wolchit instantons for the Siegel model or the Keller moduli of the uh, complete flag variety. And so, so this object solves the equation that the derivative with respect to the uh, uh, bulk instant on coupling is equal to the uh, okay, sorry. So I just write it as a, so this is the KZ operator applied to Psi. So this is defined as a sum uh, in, the, in the usual way. So Zi minus Zj. So, so here Q is just the cross ratio of four points. So 
this is the general formula. What's important is that, uh, so the ratio of the uh, equivariant parameters identified identified with the, uh, with k plus n, when k is a level of the uh, current algebra. Uh, the question from Sergey, uh, the symmetry between four points is, is, uh, is not manifest, is a different, so all, all the representations are different. And in, in uh, uh, for, for rank higher than two, for, for S, in SUN theory, they're not even equivalent because uh, uh, so the zero and infinity depend on n minus one parameters. And you have essentially one parameter at Q and one parameter at, uh, at one. But uh, there is a symmetry which exchanges Q and zero, uh, zero and infinity and Q and one. So, so the, the, there is a reduced S duality, which, which is what, what's responsible for, for, the, for the symmetry. Um, okay, there is some question, or well, maybe it's just a discussion that uh, there, is a, there is a story about N equals two star, which is slightly more involved. But uh, let's let me not get distracted by that. So the point is that the JL formula now follows from the blow up applied in the, in, in the presence of the surface effect. So let me draw, draw this historically. So this is uh, C2 viewed historically. And uh, this is the surface defect at z2 equals to zero. So this is the axis of absolute value of z2, and this is the axis of absolute value of z1. And the phases we don't see, so they're projected. So this is c2. And now I'm performing a blow up. So what I get, I get this picture. And so on the left, I have the, the partition function, the surface defect as a function of everything I wrote before. And then by the uh, generalization now of the blow up formula in the presence of the surface defect, we get the formula where we now have two terms, two factors, one of them corresponds to the surface defect So I will, I will only write the uh, important parameter. And the second factor comes from this point. We don't see any surface effect there. So the, we have the partition function of the theory in the empty space. So this is epsilon two N. And now, uh, so that's that's the relation which which is uh, very interesting in itself. So it says that in some sense, the surface effect partition function is a kind of a eigenvector of of the uh, bulk partition function acting by some kind of convolution. So you can think of some of Hecke eigenshifts or things like that, but that's just uh, well, that's that's a formula, and if you Recall what I just said on the previous slide that Psi is actually a conformal block of the of current algebra. So in, in, in general of the SLN uh, current algebra and Z is a conformal block of uh, Virasoro W algebra. So you get an interesting relation between, between, uh, between these uh, conformal blocks, but the levels are quite not intricately related because, so here the level is related to the ratio epsilon two over epsilon one. And here that quantity is changed in, transformed in a non-trivial way. And then here there's some central charge, which I don't even uh, write the formula for, but it's a usual
a GT time formula. So in order to arrive at the GIL formula, we take a limit epsilon two to zero. Then the usual uh, thermodynamic considerations uh, tell me that psi in this limit should have an exponential asymptotics where W is the twisted, effective twisted superpotential of the uh, theory living on the um, Or maybe I, I, I think I want to flip the order of limits. So, uh, so usually when you take the limit, when 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 you st start study equivariant theory with two uh, equivariant parameters epsilon one, epsilon two. So if you start if you study it on R four, uh, the theory macroscopically looks zero dimensional because everything is localized at the fixed point of the rotation. When you send one of the epsilons to zero. If you send epsilon two to zero, then you allow your uh, topological objects to move in the plane where epsilon two is sent to zero. And so you get effectively a two dimensional theory, which uh, actually has an n equals two d equals two supersymmetry. And so that theory has an effective twisted superpotential. And that's what I put here. Uh, the Z function, so this guy, Finds happens to be now in the uh, uh, so th that's epsilon one minus epsilon one, and that's c equals one. You will conform block. Um, and um, and then so uh, so the second second psi also gets exponentiated, but you have to be careful that uh, the argument is shifted by something which is. Uh, which depends on epsilon two, and so you have to take it, take all this into account. Um, and so when you do it carefully, so there's a leading term which will cancel with the lead, with the leading term on the left hand side. And then you get n times dw respect to dA, so that's beta. That's the beta parameter of, of uh, GIL. And then there is a derivative with respect to epsilon two. And that's after a little bit of careful examination turns into the logarithm of the tau function. So in order to understand the tau function, you understand that what you're quantizing is the uh, uh, it's, it's, so it, you, you need the second, second quantization parameter, which, which is what four dimensional gauge theory gives you. So th there are some prefactors which uh, one, one should be careful about like one minus T to some power, which, is, which are usually related to the fact that uh, the formula in terms of the partitions is a formula actually for U2 theory. And so you want to extract the U1, U1 uh, factor. Uh, so that's, uh, I think it should answer uh, David's uh, questions. So the, uh, the left-hand side, so, so, so the formula looks in the simplest way without ex any prefactors when you just do, you know, U2 theory left-hand side, U2 theory on the right-hand right side. When you take a limit and when you try to cancel many, many, uh, many common factors and just keep the first non-trivial term which survives the asymptotics, that's uh, so you get the certain prefactors which uh, in the GIL formula just look look uh, slightly artificial. Uh, they also uh, had the Barnes double gamma functions because they didn't 
which which they derived from just exp experimentally, uh, which of course we know come from the perturbative uh, part of the partition function. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm over time. I but I I think I delivered at least two points that uh, so you can so the the fact that the surface effect partition function a basic easy equation is a mathematical theorem. It's proven using uh, certain technology which involves uh, yet another observables in four dimensional gauge theory, which are called the Turkic characters. So uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that the uh, QQ characters uh, have certain analytic properties, the expectation values have certain analytic properties lead to the dyson schwinger equations, which uh, uh, Sasha Tsimbaluk and I managed to repackage in, in the form of the, uh, of the KZ equation that requires careful matching of the parameters. So you need to, uh, so when I say that uh, I identify the space of invariance of these four tensor of, of the tensor product of these four modules with functions of uh, uh, Keller modular, that requires certain geometry. So, so that requires a geometric realization of this mod of this uh, uh, representations of the Lie algebra. It's important that they are representations of the Lie algebra. Um, so. Uh, Albert Schwartz ask, asks me whether it's possible to write the generalization of JL for every gauge group, for every unitary gauge group. Uh, for every unitary gauge group, one can write and prove. For ADE, one can write this relation because it's uh, the blow up relation seems to hold for any, uh, any, uh, any Lie group for any uh, conformal field theory, asymptotically conformal field theory, but uh, as usual, I don't have a clue how to prove it for the in the D or E case. Also uh, for David, so for AD, uh, we have fewer choices for matter for, for uh, I mean, you can always hope for the N equals to two star theory. Uh, th there is some issue with the, with prefactors that uh, somebody is actually writing about, uh, but I think it's also the U1, U1 story, uh, U1 prefactor story. Uh, so for n equals to two star theory, I, I, I believe one should uh, this should hold for uh, for any any AD group. Um, right. Uh, how does one determine the relevant current algebra modules? Uh, so in this case, we were lucky because we actually have a brain construction, so we can use uh, Kapustian's. Uh, uh, TST uh, trick to to guess what kind of, uh, uh, for example, we can guess what the Zybeck Witten integrable system would be uh, uh, starting with four dimensional gauge theory. And from that, one can get a fa fairly decent guess of what, what's the uh, Prima modules would be. Uh, I guess the point is that you can get the structure of these representations by looking at the theory which you get you will get by compactifying the four-dimensional theory in a circle. So, uh, so the so this uh, this invariance, for example, they they are captured by the quiver which you uh, get by applying mirror three-dimensional mirror symmetry to the uh, theory which would be uh, obtained by taking the theory I start with and compactifying on the circle. So that quiver is um, but there are certain subtleties which 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 is which are hard to guess just by looking at the quiver. So it's um Okay, Greg is asking, uh, is there a relevant remnant of, uh, of S-duality in the JL formula? Well, in the formula itself, uh, I'm not sure because the formula is written as an expansion around T equals to zero. So it's, a, it's an expansion in the specific uh, corner of the, uh, of the conformal manifold. But I think, uh, 
Yes, yes, it converges. Yes, and uh, and I think the uh, GIL themselves they, they derived the formulas for the expansions at different corners and then found some transformation properties. So, so that should be okay. Yes. So it's not 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 in the formula per se, but in the, you know in the, in the understanding of this form. <laughs> Um, okay. Is, is there, there, there is another question about 60 as well. Um, but if, if you'd like to, to wrap up the talk, we can go to questions and answers. No, I'm, I think, I think already, I'm already in the, in the, in the Q &A, uh, session because. Okay, well then, then, um, then let, uh, let me thank you on behalf of the organizers and the audience. Um, thanks very much. And I'll allow people to unmute themselves um, and, and then we can, we can just ask questions. Um, were, were there any other questions and follow-ups? So, uh, so there was a question about the 6D origin of relation between surface defect partition function and four-point function. Uh, well, the origin, uh, in the sense of a hint, yes, of course, uh, this theory and uh, this NF equals four uh, SU2 theory is the theory which, which corresponds to, which is obtained by you know, compactifying the A1 type 0, 2 theory on the four punctured sphere. Uh, just from that knowledge to derive uh, everything else, uh, uh, well, you can get various indications that that's true, but, but uh, I think the main obstacle is that uh, I don't see any way other than the direct four-dimensional uh, localization computation to properly compute things with the uh, with, with the omega different with the equivariant parameters turned on. So they then the relation to of these parameters to some fluxes in M theory is uh, is not understood in the you know to the point of a practical computations. Let me put it this way. Uh, yes. I, I think the, the, the confusing thing for me is that uh, the, in the presence of the surface defect, there would be a fifth puncture on the surface. That's that depends on the picture. So, uh, so that's not. Uh, uh, it, it, it is possible to describe it in terms of the. Uh, so this this variable w, which Greg asked me in the beginning, the coordinate of the of pen number six. Uh, that's like a indeed you can map it as to the fifth puncture, but it's a kind of it's a light it's a light uh, uh, it's a so-called degenerate field. So it's a, uh, from from the level point of view it's a, it's a degenerate field. So you can uh, describe uh, this partition function as a five point uh, uh, five point conformal block of 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 level theory with the degenerate field at the fifth point. So then the uh, thanks to BPZ, Belavin Polykov Zmolochikov, we know that it obeys a certain differential equation. That equation is actually equivalent to the KZ equation that was discovered by Zmolochikov. Uh, the, the relation is uh, some kind of, a, well, it's an integral transform. And we understand this in, in, in gauge theory actually very well. So, so you can engineer both type of, uh, of defects uh, in, in, in gauge theory. Uh, so one type of defects uh, corresponds to the surface defect of, of the, this monodromy type. And another is a so-called vortex string surface effect, which you can get by embedding your theory into quiver theory with additional node and then Higgsing essentially. So adjusting the masses of the uh, matter fields at the second node to be almost equal to the Coulomb moduli. Almost meaning that they should they differ by some equivalent by by uh, they, they they are equal in the limit when you work with the, without an omega deformation, and so uh, we can derive the we can prove the formulas we can prove the that the equations are obeyed, uh, but again, uh, other than some indications on, on uh, by manipulations of brains that uh, this is where you. You can move some some brains away from the picture and then create lower dimensional brains, which would represent the surface defects. Uh, you can't really uh, move much further because uh, the computational technology is not that developed on the brain part. It's it's only very well developed on the on the field theory part, field field theory side. Sorry. 
And then, sorry, yes, maybe the last point. So the, the, the fact that this, this coincide is a kind of a artifact of low rank. If you go to the SUN case, then they become really distinct surface defects. And that's one of the topics which we explore with uh, Seb Young Jong and Norton Lee. Uh, in, in, uh, if you do take SUN theory with twin uh, uh, fundamental hypermultiplets, uh, there you have distinct surface defects. One is of this monogamy type, and another is of the uh, of the type which uh, in gauge theory language corresponds to insertion of the Q Q observable, like Baxter Q operator. Uh, they uh, they correspond to the generate fields from the current algebra point of view, and uh, uh, also sorry. So one more thing. So you can also insert surface defects. It's additional. So you can you know take superpositions. You can insert surface effects of one type and perpendicular surface effects of another type. And that, that gives the five point KZ equation, KZ equation this time. Right. I, I see. Thank you. But uh, to, to just to make a point of uh, compared to what, so uh, to comment on what David says is that in field, engaged, in field theory, we can actually interpolate. So be, because we can insert what looks like a heavy defect and then we tune, tune the masses and then it will become, start, it will correspond to the degenerative field. So, so then somehow the dimensionality drops. So Nikita, uh, I understood. Oh yes, Jan, I promised to write. No, to write. I mean, uh, yeah, all right, but it's my question. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, no, it's about the blow up. Uh, so okay. you, you uh, kind of, I think that it's a kind of important uh, this blow up of C square uh, at one point. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, it's just, a, it's a, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. No, the question is if you have not just one C square, but in, as in your work uh, collection, like of C squares, what happens? Well, uh, here we we actually we were talking about the collection of C squares. So so it was a C squared to, with, with multiplicity n. We just blew blew no, them. No no no. I mean like transversally. Transversally. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's that's uh, yeah. That's uh, in fact in some sense one one actually deals with that because uh, I'm using the QQ characters to prove certain things and Q characters correspond really to the to gauge theory and transfer space. Well, what, what do you get? It's, so, it has, so it's not a blow up which you do actually. You replace the, the uh, C4 geometry, which is where, where this, let's say transfer C2s leave. You deform it to the uh, local P1 cross C geometry. So it's like a conifold times uh, mm -hmm. no, C. No. And uh, <laughs> so that what we perceive as a blow up, it's actually a, a hypersurface inside the inside the, the conifold. So that's the that's a blow up. But it's, but it actually it's embedded inside the three dimensional uh, calabial, and then times times a line. Mm -hmm. So one of this one of the gauge theories leaves on. On this guy times the line, and another gauge theory lives on this space, and so then they still touch at one point. Okay. So one, so there is a. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 so I, just I, like I, Nakajima and Yashoka wrote a quiver description, following Bart maybe of of uh, like a DHM construction for yeah, blow yeah, it was space. Part, part of my motivation for my question. Yeah, I and So there is a now. For this cross instantons, which is now this quiver with four four uh, arrows, uh, I wrote the modification for the for, for that geometry. So so that that, that mm -hmm. exists. It's okay. it's it's more involved. It's uh, like you have three lines here, and I don't even remember all the details. Yeah, but but but, but, but you you know it. Yes, it. yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Any final questions or comments? 
Uh, may I ask you, uh, Nikita? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, you had a formula, um, uh, some pages above, um, uh, which involved psi and z. And z yes. you call the bulk partition function, and psi is some other partition function, Surface right? effect partition, yes, uh, the partition uh -huh. function in the process uh, of the should, surface effect. It, would it be correct to associate this formula with kawaii vlen tai formula, which is morally, you understood the question, um, which is morally, Ex uh, expresses the partition function of the closed string as the modular square of the open string. Partition. Well, but here it's not, uh, well, uh, no, I don't see that. Uh, so it's actually, it's an interesting question, but so- You don't I, see this yet. I don't see this yet. So I have two formulas. So one is that Z is Z star Z. Uh -huh. So that's for the bulk partition function. And then I psi see. is Z star psi. So there is some algebra and then there is a module over the algebra. That's what it looks uh, like. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I don't know, but- But what you ask is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting question. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you, mean you ask about closed string expressed through open string or gravity through gauge theory. Yes, right. Okay. No, it's, it's okay. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It, is there some kind of, uh, sorry, Andy, did you want to say something? Yes. Yeah, for, this, for these blow formulas, is there some kind of physics heuristic that would lead you to expect this, like that Z is Z star Z? Well, it's, it was actually a bit surprising to me originally that uh, there was no correction term. There is, there is no uh, uh, you know, wall crossing. As, so what this formula tells you is that you can, can, you can continue the uh, uh, the right hand side is a function of phi Leopold's term, the size of the sphere all the way to zero. So and there is no jump at zero. And for, so this is almost trivial for asymptotically free theories by on the, you know, based on ghost number uh, anomaly. But for the asymptotically free theories, it's, uh, it, it is a bit surprising that, uh, uh, but it, so it must be that there are some hidden zero modes, so to speak, that uh, which, which prevent you from, you know, letting the instantons of arbitrary small size to uh, enter right, the right-hand side. Um, that's, that's my understanding. Thanks. Pa possibly from the 4dn equals 4 perspective that, that David and Sergey mentioned, that that's relating a collision of corners. Co collision of what, sorry? sorry. Uh, it, it's, 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 um, I'm relating a collision of corner uh, of corner VLAs. Um, yes, so I, I actually did interpret this. So I interpret this this formula uh, in terms of the operator product. Well, I, I actually view it as a op op OPE of 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 corner vertex operators. So uh, every corner here in this picture is like a vertex operator for a certain algebra, and uh, that's the so that's the OPE relation that you can. Uh, fuse them and produce the vertex operator for the single corner. Um, um, take, uh, there's one final question from, from Taro Kimura. Yes, uh, Taro is asking is whether Psi is interpreted as a baker archaeizer function associated with a tau function. Not quite, it's an unfortunate notation. Uh, so the baker archaeizer function would be the uh, classical limit of the Five point uh, uh, conformal block, and that's the uh, uh, that's the, um, the partition function of intersecting surface defects. So you take uh, two surface defects of different type. So one is this the one which I just studied, and then there is another one which uh, um, which is kind of a light. Well, in, in gauge theory terms. Uh, Yes, Tar, you, you know what, what I mean. So this is the, essentially the insertion of the Q observable Fourier transformed. And, and then, this, and this is Psi. So that, that would produce the uh, baker archaeizer function. Not very so Q is the Baxter operator in, in the sense of the, the, uh, the relation of the um, 
well, Q character, and uh, in, in terms of the uh, gauge theory, this is the, this is the, uh, well, it's an infinite dimensional version of Chern polynomial of the shift, which is obtained by restriction of the universal shift on the complex line. So that's them. Or in terms of the Y observables, Y is Q of X divided by Q of X minus epsilon one. Maybe that's the easiest, easiest way of defining what Q of what Q is. Wait, we should- This is the Y observable, which you know, Tara. We, we okay. should wrap up, but, but okay. thank you very much. And thanks for, uh, for taking so many questions. Okay, thank you very um, much. Thank you. And again, yeah, th thank you everyone. And everyone have a great week.